make a chain, a turning drum uncoils this wire rod and pulls it through a steel guide ring to a steel draw box. Grease inside the box lubricates the wire. On its way out of the box, the wire goes through a die, such as the one being demonstrated here. The die has a smaller diameter than the wire, and as the turning drum pulls it through, the wire narrows, hardens, and becomes stronger. Now, electrically driven tools move in from all sides. This is a forming machine. A tool called a jaw propels the wire forward, while another jaw pushes on the wire, bending it around a steel pin. It forms a C shape. Another forming tool closes the C, completing one link in the chain. And then another jaw makes the next link. This machine is making jack chain, which is usually used to hang lights. Another forming machine makes a chain that can haul a heavier load. A grip pulls the wire onto rollers that straighten it out. Steel cutters now make notches on both sides of the wire. These notches mark the place where the wire is to be sliced into link-sized pieces. A mechanized knife makes the final cut at the notches. Next, roller arms loop a cut piece of wire around a steel finger. The roller arms make it look easy, but they're actually exerting tons of pressure in order to shape this wire. After the rollers form the link, a pliers like tool grabs it and turns it around. This positions the completed link so that it can connect with the next link as it's shaped. Now a pulley system drops the freshly welded chain into a heat treating coil. An electrical current runs through the copper coil, heating the chain inside until it's orange hot, 1724 degrees Fahrenheit. The pulleys lower the chain into a tub of water to cool. The extreme temperature change alters the molecular structure of the steel, making it much harder. But the experience leaves the chain a bit brittle. So it goes into a second heat coil that's not as hot as the first one, and then into another cool bath. This takes away the brittleness and gives the steel a bit of stretch.